That was a roller coaster. Adam, how do you sum it up? Roller coaster. Um, oh, I'm really happy with you know some of the effort and stuff like that. I'm not being overcritical. And tonight's not the night for them to you know, be getting hammered. But we clearly didn't control the first part of the second half very well. Um, and against that team, you know, they've been together a while and had reasonable success the last couple of years. So the, to start without throwing a you know a bucket load of stats, I think we were, we were none from our first six and a heap of ill discipline or five nil penalty count in that period. I think we finished the half at 52 percent completions and you're up 14 six, you know, at half time. So we needed to be better, but we're you know we're learning and. We'll learn from that loss. Uh, where you can see that there's a group in there that's really, really disappointed, and they put a hell of a lot of effort in, especially defensively. If you look at that first half, Adam, like obviously don't get the result eventually, but that first half, where does that rank in terms of the best halves you've seen from this team? It's very uh, disciplined. I don't know. I, don't, I just reckon we've been building the last, you know, certainly four or five weeks. Um, it's not like we just got done Golden Point to Penrith after we got flogged last week. I think we've just been gradually improving in little areas and you know, we don't want to let this loss or the disappointment derail that improvement, you know. So um, I don't know where it rates, I just know that we're we're working really hard during the week, players and staff, and we wanna just keep investing into our the way we wanna play and um, see where it takes us. Tyson, you're involved in a strange incident with Jerome Luai. Um, it looked from our angle that you weren't trying to pull his hair. But what did you make of that penalty? Did you answer that? Yeah. Well, when his hair's hanging down, halfway down his back, and I'm going to make a tackle, it's incidental if I, I guess if I do pull his hair, it's classified as a, um, a penalty, but it wasn't intentional. And like for him to tie his hair up. It's a big call in the context of a game like that. Right? Huge. It's ridiculous. Or just otherwise I'll advise them all to start going on the hairline to try and get an advantage. It's ridiculous. The vision that we saw, you could see you were clearly, well, you had hold of the back of his jumper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But his hair. That's what I said. It's, uh, it was incidental. I wasn't going for any hair or anything like that. But like when he's hanging half down, down the back of your back, it's pretty hard not to um, yeah, grab a bit of it. So you players right. get a bit of credit. They, they are they are actually just trying to make tackles and get people on the ground, which is like take them to the ground. And there's a lot of I guess there must be a lot of innuendo that players are out there to maim each other and pull hair and do it. It's not the case. Tyson, you played in the last game. The last time these guys came to town, I think it was 42 to 6, less than a year ago. When you play like that, you see the guys fighting like that, the discipline in that first half. Does it kind of show you how far this team's come in quite a short amount of time? Yeah, it has. And I guess we've tried to wipe um, last year. And like, as you said, we've, we've been slowly progressing from the start of the year and been chipping away, chipping away. And I do feel today was a, another step forward for it um, in saying that. Yeah, we shot ourselves in the foot in the second half there, and if we're going to hold ourselves to a high standard, you know, we need to be better. But in saying that as well, we, we were pretty resilient on our line. I think to be able to defend how many sets on our line and complete at 50%, teams in the past would probably put, you know, 50 on us in that second half. But um, like I said, we've been pretty resilient, but in saying that also, we, we need to be better if we want to proven week, week, week in, week out. I'm not sure if you heard at the end of the game, you guys were just moments after you lost. The crowd were actually chanting Newcastle. Um, it's very rare after a loss that you hear a crowd do that, right? Did you guys, could you hear that on the field? And I guess what does it mean to the group when you hear that sort of stuff? I did hear that, but I wasn't sure if it was Newcastle, but now you're saying, like yeah, I, I, I do remember. Um, yeah. I guess we want to, this town backs us whether we win or lose, and they ride the emotions and the wins with us. You know, we've spoken before, when we win games and perform, people in Newcastle walk a bit taller. Um, I guess they were proud of um, the effort we put in today, but we want results as well at the end of the day and make them proud that way. But, um, 
yeah, tonight was a, a step in the right direction, but a lot of room for improvement as well. Adam, how do you make sure the group, or do you feel the group's not satisfied with the performance because of the result? No, I think they, they're smart enough to understand that we didn't handle or didn't control that first part of the second half. That's probably the disappointment. Uh, clearly, the result will be a major disappointment. They want to win. Um, but they understand that you know, we've, we've done a lot of stuff to ourselves in that first half. So that's, you know, what Fritz said, we've, we've got to get better at it too. We, we can't sit in here every week and say, geez, there was a ton of effort at some stage we've got we're all going to marry up execution and effort and discipline all have to meet each other on the same 80 minute performance. Adam, can you talk to um, the uh, input that Tyson Gamble had tonight coming back from the concussion, um, scored a try, kicked a field goal that may have, could have been the winning field goal in other circumstances and, and then how you plan to use him with Kalen coming back next week? Uh, he'll, well, he'll be in the team, I'll find him a role, he's a, he's a footy player. Um, I'll sort all that out once we once the dust settles on this game, and then we start looking at the Cowboys. Um, yeah, they obviously Tawani come up with some really big plays for us, and that's what he does. He just competes, and I think him and along with you know Jackson Hastings, um, Adam Elliott will be back in a few weeks. There at Jack Elliott, we brought in competitors, and that's what he that's what I love about him. A hell of a job to know that. You know, especially when it's option two. We went to option one and it got closed off, and it's, it's a pretty big play. Yeah, Your inability to handle the restarts, I don't know how many, and I mean, you've got to give Cleary the credit as well, yeah. but I think there was probably five. The short, four or five, the short stuff, kickoffs, yeah. and pretty crucial in the, in the end, time wise. Yeah. Uh, I, take the heat on that one. I reckon we don't have practiced them enough lately and we've been trying to practice a hell of a lot of other stuff in our game that we're getting right defensively. Uh, the formation, we're in the right formation, our short kickoff set up, but we need to go and just execute it, go and, uh, go and grab them once, don't we? No doubt that and more deep practice on our goal kicking and stuff like that would help. I'd like to go in at 18-6, but I'm not going to sit here and blame a goal kicker either. Adam, thanks, Crossland did a pretty good job for you. Um, is he looking like your number nine for the rest of the year, do you think? Yeah, him and Kurt. I think uh, the plan to have those two guys share it tonight. Um, put two roster spots on, I'm never saying never, but he's doing a hell of a job at the moment, so I'm not looking to fill those spots with a nine at this present point. I don't want to get snooky, Robert, because you'll get me later if I do do it, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm pretty happy with the kid. I thought he done a hell of a job tonight. Fritz, did you get an explanation um, off the referee for the penalty in possession? I, I, I think it was, was it Gags at dummy half um, when, when Penner scored in the next set when he gave away a penalty yeah. down near your line? You approached the referee after the try. Did you get any sort of explanation as to why the penalty was given? Yeah, just the way he interpreted it. I wasn't happy with it and spoke about it after and he understood and yeah, that's. That's how it went, pretty much. You don't see it very often now, a, a dummy half getting penalised for, for, I don't know, was it mouthing off or something? I'd... Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, like I said, it wasn't wasn't directed directly at him, which he thought it was, but um, that's the way he took it, and the penalty come from it, but um, in saying that, he, he understood. Once I explained it to him where Gags was coming from, and... Cleary taking the kick and Lockie coming in on him. How did you see that? Do you think that's a penalty? Well, if it happened to us, we'd be appealing for it too, so I don't, I'm not blaming Penrith. We had, we had penalties for bad language and another penalty for hair pulling tonight. Well, how many do we want to have? <laughs>